C Tim Shaw podcast. Education has been in the news this week with the federal government announcing a new schools funding plan. But what are teachers doing at a grassroots level to innovate and to get the best out of their students? We asked Canberra's teachers yesterday to comment about uh, proposed funding for schools going forward for the next 10 years. Sharon from Jerobomba says, Tim, we need smaller class sizes because of the diversity of students, mental health concerns and family issues. Teachers need to differentiate more so than ever before. Teaching is all about relationships, says Sharon. Carol from Hawker said, Gonski is wonderful. Smaller classes are infinitely better. Individual children can get more individual tuition. Now, a lot of money needs to be spent on educating the teachers. We're not having enough of how to teach how to impart knowledge without relying totally on technology. And the extra administrative load on teachers is absolutely dreadful. And Tony from Belconnen says the same thing. Administration for teachers grows exponentially. Accountability and reporting grows by the year. We get less time in front of our students. Eddie Wu is the head maths teacher at Cherrybrook Technology High School in northwest Sydney. He set up his own WooTube channel. That's right, it's not YouTube, it's WooTube. It's been watched by tens of thousands of students who don't totally get maths or are more interested in understanding how mathematics worked. And I was so moved by Eddie Wu's story on the ABC on Monday night on the Australian story that I thought Canberra deserved to hear from him directly and I'm really pleased to say that Eddie Wu, the head mathematics teacher at Cherrybrook Technology High School, is on the line. Good morning to you, Mr Wu. Tim, it's so lovely to be with you this morning. I was so taken, Eddie Wu, by the way you approached the enthusiasm of teaching your students. When did the idea first come to you of videoing your classes? Videoing my classes was really something of an accident. In fact, I would love to take credit for it being a well-thought-out process. But what happened was that I had a single student who was incredibly ill in my class. He was diagnosed with cancer, and so he had to spend weeks at a time, uh, several in a row, being away from school, undergoing treatment, and, of course, recovery time. And I thought, look, this is an awful situation for anyone, let alone a 16-year-old boy. And it's difficult to learn any subjects when you're, you know, in school one day, out of school for the next month, but especially mathematics. I think many people have had that experience where they've tried to understand a concept, but if they're missing the pieces, they just can't fit it all together. And many people then just check out of mathematics and say, oh, I gave up after fractions, or I gave up after they started putting letters in the mix. That was just too much for me. Yeah. And so... That's why I started videoing my lessons so that I could give them, I could pass them on to this boy. And while it's not exactly the same as being in the classroom, at least he had a sense of being, participating in the learning process at the same time along with us. So what happened from there, Eddie, was that more and more students, young high school students, wanting to understand maths better, heard about some of these video. This has gone viral, Eddie. In fact, there was a teacher in the story, I think at Cobar High School, and some of her students got onto it, and you now help and consult with other teachers around Australia in helping them to better teach maths to their students. How important is it for teachers to talk to each other about better learning methods, about better ways of teaching students? Tim, it's so central to the profession. And I think that, in fact, uh, you know, some of the comments that you were mentioning before from your listeners about the difficulty facing us in terms of time, I think one of the primary ways that we feel that is that teaching can be a very isolating profession because in many ways, as a teacher, you enter your classroom, you shut the door, and you're there with your students working as hard as you can. But often we lack the opportunity to be able to speak and connect with our fellow colleagues and with our other educators. And that's just central. I was very fortunate that when in my first teaching position, I was surrounded by a number of staff who were incredibly experienced. They'd taught longer than I'd been alive, and they were always willing 
to answer a question, to provide me with advice. But not everyone has uh, that opportunity. And, you know, particularly, as you mentioned, Coma, uh, areas that are regional or remote don't have access to the same kinds of professional development or even the same kinds of learning communities uh, that other people in, say, metropolitan areas do. And that's how we develop as teachers. Well, do you know, one of my listeners was so impressed, he's nominating you for Australian of the Year. (laughs) And do do you know why I think it's a great idea, Eddie, is that... Teachers are so important to all of us. I learn something new every day, but I'm, I'm past doing maths in high school, as you would understand. I host a breakfast radio program. But you are the future of the future of Australia because you're creating that inquisitiveness and the learning skills that young Australian boys and girls need. How do you, how do you react when, pe- when people say that small class sizes don't necessarily lead to better outcomes for students. What's your view? Do you think smaller class sizes are better for students in Australia? This is such a complicated question. So I should point out that I have, you know, my classroom experience to speak from, uh, but this is a very multifaceted issue. I know there are uh, places in the world where small class sizes are treasured. Uh, There are other places where small class sizes are not seen as a priority and there are other areas that are focused on and that funding goes to. So I can definitely say from my time teaching students, this is my 10th year teaching, uh, I definitely view the centrality of relationship and rapport with my students as just it's just foundational without that you don't have anything in the classroom Uh, in fact that's why a lot of people their memory of say learning mathematics is that someone stood up the front of the classroom they showed an explanation or a concept on the blackboard and then they sat down and that was it and if you understood it that was great but if not then you were just kind of up the creek without a paddle but Learning mathematics really is a lot more about workshopping ideas and learning skills together in a collaborative environment, and that requires the individual and small group attention of a teacher who can understand exactly what the students need, know what point they're at and what they need to move forward. And it's very difficult to do either of those things when your classes are very, very large. So I can definitely speak to the value of that, but I know it's not the only ingredient in the equation. Yeah, well said, Eddie. Uh, We've also had teachers saying, Tim, the amount of administrative work now and the paperwork that goes with me as a teacher within my school. You're a great user of time. I think you're a very good time manager, as as was pointed out in the Australian story. Where do you find the time to go and plan the class, then video it, then go home and edit that material? I mean, you're a good user of your time. What's your advice to teachers who are time poor here in Canberra? Look, I would say probably every teacher is time poor. Yeah. One of the things that I uh, experienced the first moment that I uh, stepped into the classroom and started to interact with students and uh, do the work of a teacher outside the classroom, such as you know writing reports, preparing lessons, getting assessments all ready. The work of a teacher is never done. It's not as though you work, say, in a car factory and there's a point where you put on the doors and then you put in the seats and then you make sure the whole thing's painted and then it goes out the factory door and you're finished. That work doesn't happen in teachers' lives because you can always make that lesson better. You can always spend more time tutoring those students individually outside of class time. So I think my advice would probably be to make sure that you've got the big things first. I mean, you can fill up your life as a teacher, as any profession really, with a lot of the minutia. It's true that there's a lot of admin in the life of the teacher. We benefit a lot from that. I mean, I'll give you an example. Once upon a time, when we marked the role in uh, you know, New South Wales schools, certainly, we had a, a piece of paper. We'd uh, keep, keep that ticking along uh, day by day. And then once we were done with the year, that piece of paper would go in a filing cabinet and it'd be finished and you'd never see it again. Today, when I walk into my classroom, rather than marking that on a piece of paper, I'm going to have to log on. I'm going to have to record that electronically. And that adds a tiny moment into my classroom, but it gives me a tremendous benefit because suddenly I see a profile of my student, not just you know, in my class and how they've been going over time, but in every class they've been that day over the course of the year and access to that information helps me teach better. So I think making sure that I don't lose the forest for the trees, getting the benefit out of those administrative tasks like 
knowing your students better, but also ensuring that, look, spending time with students and advising them on the subjects they're going to choose in the year ahead, uh, making sure that I speak to parents and communicate with them and make sure they are on the same page with me. Those are really big ticket items that if we get them right first, the rest will follow. How important is it for parents and carers to be across what their student child is learning and that relationship between parent, teacher and, um, and the student? Look, that, that three-pointed relationship is kind of the holy trinity of making education work, to be honest. I see all the time the uh, both sides of the equation where some parents are enabled to uh, provide incredible support to their children, and we see the difference that makes. And when students lack that, uh, you know, it's not as though it uh, seals their fate and makes their education impossible, but it's so much more of a challenge for these young people who have are uh, going through an incredibly challenging time in their life. I think we all remember the difficulties of being a teenager, trying to sort out who on earth you are, working out uh, how to navigate peer pressure. And I think we can all agree that today's teenagers face that perhaps more than ever before with social media. And then to have all of the academic concerns on top of that, the value of a parent being deeply and uh, frequently involved in their child's education, you just can't overstate it. I, I know as a parent myself, my children are three, six and eight and uh, so my oldest two are in primary school and being able to talk to them uh, every day and to communicate with their teachers and say well how can I help how can I support what areas do I need to uh, be involved in that process Uh, it's valuable beyond words. Thank you, Mr. Wu. And uh, Mr. WooTube, that's uh, Mr. M-I-S-T-E-R, WooTube, W-O-O-T-U-B-E dot com. Eddie Wu, thank you for being you. Olga says on Facebook, Eddie Wu, you are a legend. And uh, one of our listeners says he's definitely nominating you for Australian of the Year. And I think if you were to be the Australian of the Year, that would be a big thumbs up to every teacher and educator in Australia. Eddie Wu, thank you for your time this morning. Tim, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, Eddie Wu, head mathematics teacher at Cherrybrook Technology High School. He doesn't just teach a classroom. His passion and love for mathematics is self-evident. And when young students log on to his MrWooTube.com site, they learn about mathematics. He's a real inspiration. I think we're very lucky to have spoken to him on 2CC Canberra.